The thought that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. We headed toward Winchester. The king would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. A sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, travelling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners, she smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, their hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter and care. We followed her to the hut. It was further than she had led us to believe. There I helped my brother off the horse and let the woman take the horse's reins. The hut was rather barren, with few furnishings. It was almost as cold as outside, and there was no sign of her husband. Richard dropped onto one of the creaky stools. The woman lit a fire, which came alive with a crackle and gave out a warming glow. I told her that we may have nothing to give her now, but if she managed to make Richard well again, we'd come back and reward her one day. She finally turned towards us again, an odd smile on her lips. Something was strange about her expression. She nodded towards the fire. There was a sound outside, but she distracted my attention by turning to Richard. She started to explain that to close a wound, one must gently press a hot piece of metal against the flesh. This will stop demons and bad smells from entering the body. The woman's eyes kept darting to the door, so I turned my head to see what it was she was looking for. The moment after I'd turned my head, my own knife was pointing at my face. She'd noticed the dagger in my sleeve and had yanked it out before I knew what was happening. She apologised. It's a tough world, and it's eat or be eaten. There was another noise outside. He's here, she said. I swiftly grabbed a splintered board from the ground and pointed it at her in defense. Suddenly, I was grabbed from behind, and the next moment I landed hard on the floor. He examined us and our weapons and broke into laughter. He stepped closer to reach for Richard's sword, but his wife interrupted. We can't sell that. Everyone would know who that sword belonged to. The man grunted in agreement and turned to leave. Before she followed him, she dropped my dagger. Burn out your brother's wound with this, she said, and disappeared. We heard the whinnying of William's horse and the stomping of hooves from outside. We stood frozen until Richard told me to go and have a look. As I did, the outlaws were long on their way, and our mount with them. The hut probably hadn't belonged to them in the first place, but at least it meant a roof over our heads for the night. The fire was still burning. We had no other choice but to trust the word of the outlaw. The heated dagger trembled in my hands. Do it, Ali, I can take it. Richard tried to sound brave. A horrible hissing sound and the smell of burnt flesh filled the hut when the blade touched his ear, but it seemed to work. For a few hours, I guarded the door while Richard slept, but soon I fell asleep too. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between. 
But we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak, but at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare. <laughs> 